Last month, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered to remove South Korean built facilities at the North Mount Pyongyang Resort. The leaders of the two Koreas agreed in September last year to resume the tour program as soon as conditions are met. It was suspended in 2008 after a female tourist was shot to death by a North Korean guard. The tour program was a key symbol of a reconciliation between the two Koreas, which technically remained at war as the 1950-1953 Korean War ended only with an armistice, not a peace treaty. This week, North Korea now will look into the Mount Gyeonggang tour program, a symbol of inter-Korean exchanges and cooperation. Mount Gyeonggang has historically been one of the most scenic spots representing the Korean peninsula. Since the division of the two Koreas, however, Mount Gyeonggang has become a part of North Korean territory north of the border, making it impossible for South Koreans to travel there for around 50 years. In January 1989, Chung Joo-young, the late founder and former chairman of Hyundai Group, visited the North to sign an agreement between Hyundai and North Korea to start the program. And then the tour program started a decade later. In October 1998, then honorary chairman Chung Joo-young met the late North Korean leader Kim Jong-il in Pyongyang and made a deal under the condition of renting the Mount Gyeonggang area for 50 years, paying 942 million US dollars to the north. And finally, the tour to Mount Gyeonggang began on 18th November of that year, with a cruise ship named Gyeonggang leaving the port of Donghae in Gangwon province. At first, it was only possible to go by boat, but overland tours by bus began in 2003, and in 2005, KBS Open Concert was held there to mark the cumulative 1 million tourists. In 2006, Nongha Bank's Mount Gyeonggang branch opened, and passenger car tours began in 2008, and golf courses at Mount Gyeonggang were also completed. While expanding, however, the tour has met an unexpected ambush. The tour program was suspended after a South Korean tourist Pa Gwangja was killed by a North Korean guard on July 11, 2008. A total of 1,955,951 tourists visited Mount Gyeonggang until then. In other words, it has been suspended just before achieving the goal of 2 million tourists. Even after the suspension of the tour, reunion events of separated families and a ceremony marking the 15th anniversary of Hyundai Group's start of Mount Gyeonggang tour have been held at the resort, but the door has not been opened for general tourists. A safety guarantee has been regarded as the prerequisite for the resumption of the tour program since its suspension. However, North Korea has not made an official apology for the incident. Nonetheless, growing hopes for the resumption of the tour program come after the Panmunjom declaration in April last year. Hyundai Group, which launched a task force after the April Inter-Korean Summit, held a joint Inter-Korean event in November last year to mark the 20th anniversary of the cross-border tour program. In his New Year's speech, Kim also said that he is ready to resume the joint project without preconditions. South Korean President Moon Jae-in hailed Kim's remarks. But inter-Korean relations have been in limbo since the breakdown of the Hanoi summit between US President Donald Trump and Kim last February. It ended without a deal as they failed to find common ground over how to match Pyongyang's denuclearization steps with corresponding measures by Washington. A prolonged stalemate in nuclear talks between the North and the US has also taken a toll on inter-Korean ties, as sanctions are standing in the way of Seoul's push to expand and advance their relations. In contrast with last year, when a whirlwind of cross-border contacts and exchanges took place after their leaders' three meetings, North Korea has been less receptive to Seoul's offer of cooperation in talks in recent months, leading to limited progress in their major cross-border projects like the Mount Gyeonggang tour program. South Korea invested a huge amount of money in launching the joint tour program at the Sinim Mountain. Hyundai Asian Corporation in particular, a South Korean firm that owns a 50-year license for its operation, spent more than 600 million US dollars in constructing buildings and facilities necessary for the project. To make matters worse, however, prospects for the resumption of the program have become all the more uncertain with Kim's recent order. What are your thoughts on this? Please let me know in the comments below and thank you for watching North Korea Now.